This week in Texas, politics involved a lot of digging in, indicating that it may be a very long and hot summer here in Texas. Let's get our headlines this week, and we'll start first with Brad Johnson with the Texan News. Brad, what's your headline? The GOP Circular Firing Squad takes San Antonio. Annie Spillman, Main Street uh, Relations, what's your headline? Unlike other states, Texas lags behind in toll discounts. Political analyst Mark Wiggins, your headline for the week. The Convention of Chaos. Early voting in the primary runoffs wrapping up this week with all eyes uh, focused on the race involving House Speaker Dade Phelan. Brad, a lot of money is being pumped into this one. Are you surprised? No, not at all. This is the most important race, and this is the bellwether for everything else going forward into next session. I've heard that it's possible we'll see upwards of $12 million spent on both sides of it, including all you know, outside groups. So everyone's throwing everything they can at the wall. We'll see where it turns out on Tuesday. Annie, a lot of business groups are throwing in on this one. Absolutely. Look, I mean, it was a good session for business groups. Uh, there was a lot of regulatory relief that happened under the leadership of Speaker Phelan. Uh, he had a big get out the vote rally with former Governor Rick Perry, who was very business friendly, still is. Um, you know, he's he said multiple times, Speaker Phelan, that his district is not for sale. Um, and he's had several of his House member colleagues come into the district and help him block walk and get out the vote. And uh, I know that he's still up for a, de a debate with his opponent that his opponent has uh, dodged up to this point in talking about property taxes and things like that. And uh, his opponent has just uh, sort of been in hiding when it comes to that. I can't remember a single house district attracting this kind of money. Do you, Mark, can you remember anything like this? No, Rudy, and it's just crazy the amount of money that's come in, in particular from out of state. I mean, that's where the, the majority of the funding is going to the speaker's opponent. But you know what else is just so bizarre, Rudy? You know, back when I was a young lobbyist and, and even before then, you know, when we worked together, uh, you know, I remember when the big three state leaders, the governor, the speaker, the lieutenant governor, they had breakfast once a week. And now we see, you know, members of the big three, they're openly spending money against another member. They're campaigning against another, their peer, basically. Um, and, you know, a lot of folks who've been here for a lot longer than I have would tell you that there's just never seen anything like that before. Well, certainly the race is a big topic statewide and also a big topic at the Republican State Convention that is underway this week. And, you know, there's a lot of obsession over the House Speaker. It seems like that that's the main topic uh, going on down there, and, and there's nothing else, but there is a lot more, right, Mark, that's happening there uh, with that convention? What are you watching? Yeah, Rudy, I mean, the purpose of a political party is to get your candidates elected. That's it. Then under the current leadership, you know, the RPT has lost staff, it's lost funding, and, and quite frankly, it's lost relevance. I mean, especially when it's spending money attacking other Republicans. Now, Republican candidates are still winning at the top of the ticket, but that's because they pretty much all of them have cut ties to the state party. So if Republicans are going to continue to be successful in the state, especially in those down ballot races, they're going to have to start growing the party instead of purging it. You know, Annie, what caught your attention so far? You know, is it the leadership or, or some of the new rules that they're pitching? They're talking about closing the Republican primary. Right. Well, you know, that's a different uh, dangerous path to go down. I I'll tell you this. You know, there's several candidates uh, for the GOP chair, uh, you know, several that stand out. One is a local Matt McCoyad, who some of your viewers would recognize the name of because he's been the GOP chair at Travis County. Um, he has got a proven record. You know, he's been around. He's been a fundraiser. He's been part of campaigns. Um, he seems to be more of sort of the practical, uh, reasonable, more sort of, if you want to say, business uh, relatable uh, candidate in this GOP uh, race. Uh, there's several others. There's another one out there that seems to be the favorite for Attorney General Ken Paxton and the former GOP chair. Um, you know, there's a bunch of rules out there that could be scary down the line uh, for the party and for the state of Texas. But I think they're they're looking at right now, um, you know, what's going to be best for the party down the road in helping steer the potential margin of victory for President Trump, uh, Ted Cruz, down ballot things like you mentioned in the South Texas congressional races, uh, Railroad Commission, Texas Supreme Court. Um, so I think right off the bat, electing uh, leadership in the GOP is going to be important. And then they'll look at, um, you know, the rest of the things like uh, 
you know, the property tax and what's going to make the ballot. You know, for the past year, the Texas GOP has been involved in a civil war. Brad, do you think this is the pivotal moment that the war ends or it goes on? Certainly not ending. And it hasn't, there's been no sign of it ending for a long time. It's been raging for a while, but it is a pivotal point. And we're going to see, uh, we're going to be able to tell a lot about how things go moving forward, who the kind, who the Texas GOP chair is. Do they maintain the current course trying to push, especially these legislative priorities over everything else on the legislature? Do they try and strike a more amicable uh, relationship with those in the legislature? Um, generally, there's an ideolo ideological fight between should the party just focus on electoral functions or should it really be a battering ram for legislation uh, in, in, the, in the Capitol? Um, it will, it'll probably fall somewhere in between, but where exactly it's going to tell a lot. You know, the Texas Democrats have been throwing a lot of shade at the Texas uh, Republicans in the convention, but, you know, they're involved in their own meltdown, too. And so while those parties are trying to figure out who they are, the Texas Lyceum poll came out this week with a poll in a survey saying Texans are more focused on the economy. Annie, I know that business groups, they're really have been screaming a lot lately in regards to it's about the economy. It's about the inflation. Do something. That's right. And I, I'm glad that this poll came out. Look, business groups have been screaming about inflation since the fallout of the pandemic and have been using the biggest megaphone they could use to get people to listen. Luckily, we do have regulators in Texas that have listened and they listen when it comes to economic implications to the state. Uh, the poll really pointed to economic anxiety and inflation has increased the cost of pretty much everything in the state of Texas. Anxiety and uncertainty can really cripple our local businesses and its impact on our community. Uh, you know, they, they can't increase wages. They, they can't hire more people. They can't expand. So it's critical that we take heed from surveys like this. Brad, what do you think? Uh, pocketbook politics, that's what's going to be the driver? I think that and the border. Um, the border is an issue Republicans are especially are winning at the moment. Uh, but it's the economy, stupid, right? That's the line, classic line in all these presidential races. Uh, that'll tell a lot. Uh, one other thing in, our, in the Lyceum poll that caught my eye was RFK at 11%. Uh, that's not a good sign for President Biden uh, if that is extrapolated across the entire country, but uh, I guess we'll see. RFK, a threat to Trump too, don't you think, Mark? You know, Rudy, looking at that poll, the, the, the Texas voters say that border security is the biggest issue facing Texas and the economy is the biggest issue facing the country. And the conventional wisdom is usually that the perceptions of the economy tend to lock in around summer. But in this in this election cycle, I really think they've been baked in a long, a long ago. I mean, even though the numbers on paper show an incredible recovery and we got news this week that mortgage, uh, mortgage interest rates are ticking down, that's good news. But I just don't think that people are perceiving that. And, uh, and it's going to take a real outlier sort of economic event, I think, to turn the dial at this point. The Texas Lyceum poll also showed that Donald Trump has a 10-point lead here in Texas. So does Ted Cruz. While he was in state, Trump being in state last week, and uh, he's coming back next week, several Texas Republicans, they went up to New York uh, for the last day of Trump's hush money trial. Brad, is that just political coattailing, or is there a real strong purpose for that? I mean, I'm sure there's some of that, but he's their guy and they're backing him. He backed them in various capacities. You know, Trump came in and uh, railed against impeachment. He is, you know, a huge ally to Dan Patrick in the states and endorsing candidates that Patrick wants him to in these various races. So I think it's more of them, you know, showing their support for the president uh, in the current situation uh, going forward that will be returned again, I'm sure. But that only plays for the party faithful, right, Mark? Yeah, I think as more people start to think Trump may win this thing, you're going to see more of them do what is required to get into his good graces. And, and what that means is a, an ostentatious display of loyalty. Annie, uh, from a business point of view, it's got to be good business. Uh, you know, Texas with the oil and gas industry taking so many hits. Is that what this is about? Trying to, you know, say, remember us? I, listen, Texas is always going to stay a friend of mine, so whatever it takes. Um, you know, I, I agree. I think that this is going to be sort of a brothers in arms showing. You know, obviously it's good to see and be seen, but just like with any folks in office, they're going to stand with their colleagues. They're going to go block, walk, poll Greek, give speeches and semblance, and in this case, go stand with them in court. 
hardliners digging in is just not a Republican thing. Six, uh, six Texas congressional Democrats voting on Capitol Hill against a House resolution to ban non-citizens from voting in D.C. elections. Greg Kassar, Lloyd Doggett, among those now on record supporting the idea, non-citizens participating in a local election. Mark, that may not hurt them with their base, but that isn't really good for the overall party, right? Well, you just got to look back to that same Lyceum poll and, and many, many polls beforehand, Rudy. Uh, the border remains a top issue for Texans, and that doesn't matter what party you're in or how close you live to the Rio Grande. If I'm consulting Democrats, I'm going to tell them you need to have a strong position on that issue. Being tone deaf or, uh, you know, just digging in too much, Annie? Listen, I mean, part, I mean, the biggest part of being a U.S. citizen is the constitutional right to vote. This sets a terrible precedent to let non-citizens decide local elections and ordinances that have a major impact on local businesses, a lasting impact on the community and on its citizens and on, on citizens and businesses outside of that community. Hand-delivered self-political ad there, Brad? Yeah, I mean, you know, both parties are doing their best to give the other one the upper hand and uh, nobody really wants to take the majority at get this point, <laughs> but uh, you know, that may solidify a bit closer. You know, as, uh, as for the border battle, Governor Greg Abbott on social media this week has been providing updates on the new base camp that's being built along the Rio Grande and the border wall construction. Annie, uh, is this uh, the governor just simply saying, come and take it? Well, I don't know how many of you remember MTV Cribs, but this reminds me of one of those episodes with the governor welcoming the president virtually uh, into his view, aerial view of the forward operating base in Eagle Pass. He's definitely flaunting his Texas built uh, base camp and challenging the feds to come and take it. Yeah, <laughs> Brad, this is kind of like a, one of those little home TV shows, right? Look what I built. Yeah, I mean, they're still worrying on the border fights and it's not, never gonna end, um, at least in this race. And so uh, the governor's doing what he can to make keep it an issue, uh, alive Mark, as an issue. Mark, I wanna say doubling down, but it's doubling down on doubling down on doubling down, right? Yeah, I mean, we know it's a tough issue for Texas voters. The governor feels like he's got a good position on it, and so his consultants are going to be telling him to do everything he can to keep it in the news. Well, Texas and the feds fighting, that's certainly nothing new. But this week, Ken Paxton teamed up with the Biden administration, DOJ, and a lawsuit against Live Nation, the parent company of Ticketmaster. Brad, should we be checking the temperature in hell? What's going on? Is this Ken Paxton and Taylor Swift uniting together? I don't know. Um, <laughs> You know, one thing that caught my eye with, with this was the release from the attorney general. And he was touting it's the 75th lawsuit against the Biden administration. That marketing just goes perfectly for him. Um, and obviously, he's taking advantage of it. That's the big takeaway, I thought. One true bipartisan measure, right, Mark? Uh, Rudy, I was one of those who spent four hours uh, waiting online to not be able to buy George Strait tickets at Kyle Field. So, um, you know, I sent an invoice for billable hours, but I haven't heard anything back yet. Annie, is this a pro-business move or pro-consumer move or both? Yeah, I mean, it could be both. It's definitely going against those big monopolies that box out and drive up prices, you know, that box out those competitors. Um, it's interesting that he's joining, you know, the Democratic administration that's also taking action against those big, you know, corporations like Google, Amazon, and other tech giants. So you could say it's pro small business, and there always has to be that slam dunk feel good lawsuit, right? Uh, the official start of summer is coming up next week, and Governor Greg Abbott this week saying that this is uh, tourism week in Texas. You know, Annie, uh, you you cued in on this. Uh, is this just kind of like springboarding into trying to jumpstart the economy here in Texas since, you know, things are really tight? Yeah, I mean, I applaud Governor Abbott for recognizing, uh, you know, travel and tourism week. The travel and tourism industry, honestly, you'd be surprised it's taken a hit over the last several years as sort of the school start date has moved up. The reason why is it's it's already hard to feel, to fill, excuse me, those positions. Um, it's hard to find seasonal workers. And a lot of times you see these high schoolers come out and they look for their summer jobs. Um, well, summer is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Um, and so it's good that we get people that come out and travel. Um, and a lot of times we have our 16 year olds getting their first time jobs at the local sandwich shop. So we want them to, it's good that Governor Abbott is highlighting this travel week. So 
And let's encourage our teenagers to go out, get a job, learn soft skills, learn how to work with people and, you know, go out and work a couple hours a day and then they can go hit the pool. Mark, uh, you agree, uh, political payoff, spend local? You know, I think that there's an interesting dimension to that, you know, that Annie kind of uh, alluded to, and that is, um, you know, it's it's really somewhat recent legislation that has driven a lot of this instability in the um, school start and end dates. And what was once a pretty uniform thing where, you know, everybody could rely on schools releasing at the same time and, you know, everybody making their summer plans together. Um, you know, the, the uh, flexibility given to school districts through the districts of innovation um, to change their start dates really to and to wherever kind of they want um, has led to uh, a lot of instability and a lot of unpredictability that has, you know, like Annie mentioned, it's had some negative consequences, um, in particular on the tourism community. Spend local, Brad, that's good, good political uh, low-hanging fruit for the governor. Oh, yeah, it always is. And, you know, we see the, the increased effort to bring things stateside. It applies locally as well. Uh, it just feels good. And um, you know the people in, in these businesses that, are, that you're buying from. All right, let's end it there. And we're going to wrap up this week with one word. And we'll start first with Mark. Mark, your word. Yes. Graduation. Circus. And with that, we're wrapping up another week in Texas politics.